Why do we gather? So more and more things are beginning to go back to normal in our lives. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they continue to do that. We're seeing lockdown restrictions eased more and more and more. And this Sunday in our church in Kingdom Faith, all of our congregations are opening up for in-person services for the first time in over a year. We're so happy to see this and we're really excited to be able to gather together in person again. But why do we gather in person? What is the significance of the Sunday morning church gathering that so many people think of when they think of the word church? Now, in our series so far for Ecclesia, we've often been looking at the personal relationships because that is such an important part of the, who the church is. The church isn't just an organisation, but it's made up of called out ones, of individuals that join together to form what Paul often calls the body of Christ. And just as a body has lots of different parts that make up the body that you see in front of you of a person, so it is with the church. We are individuals that are brought together with our own distinct personalities and identities, um, but made one in Jesus. He's the glue. The Holy Spirit is the glue that sticks us all together, that brings us all together and makes us one. But there is this other side to church that maybe if we were to talk to some random person on the street and say, what do you think of when you think of church? They might think of a group of people going together, gathering together on a Sunday morning for worship. So Let's think about that a minute. What is this gathering all about and why is it so significant? So first of all, let's start by thinking about why is it Sunday morning traditionally when people gather to celebrate Jesus? Well, this goes right back to the foundational event of Christianity when Jesus rose from the dead. In all four of the gospel accounts, it says that the day that Jesus rose was on the first day of the week. Now, if we understand a little bit of the Jewish culture that Jesus was in, you'll know that the Shabbat, which is on Saturday, even to this day, Jews still celebrate Saturday, well, from Friday night until Saturday evening as Shabbat. And so the first day of the week is Sunday for them. Now, because of our Western culture and the way that our dating system has worked, often we think of Monday as the first day of the week. And that's because Sunday has now become the day when we as Christians rest, just like the Jews on Shabbat will not do anything. They really do rest. And that, so it is for Christians now on a Sunday morning. So when Jesus rose on the first day of the week, what the gospel writers are trying to tell us is that a new creation is beginning. On the first day of a new week, a new reality is being born from Jesus rising from the dead. And isn't it amazing to think that every single week since that first Resurrection Sunday, the first Easter Sunday, every single Sunday since then, Christians have gathered. And this is why Christians gather, to remember the resurrection of Jesus, to remember that in the midst of the world that we live in, we want to worship and honour God and remember that our hope is in him. That's why we gather, particularly on a Sunday morning, because we are remembering the fact that on the first day of the week, 2,000 years ago, Jesus really did physically rise from the dead. And that resurrection reality can still impact our lives today. That is the primary reason that we gather to worship Jesus, to remember his love for us and to express our love for him, but also for one another. Because, of course, Christianity is not just supposed to be something that is for us and that we only live in an individual way. God has made it so that we live this Christian life in a community with other people. And that's the other reason that the gathering has been so important for so many throughout the centuries. It's a time when the poor, when the lonely, when the widow, when the orphan, those in society that are on the outskirts can come into a family and be accepted and loved for who they are. Now, of course, many of you watching this might think, yeah, but what about when the church has hurt people or abused people even or really upset people? What about then? And of course, I would say I'm so sorry if that has been your experience of the church. And as I said in the very first video for this series, 
That is not God's plan. But the reason we think it's so wrong and so bad is because it's not supposed to be that way. When the church or people in the church act in that way, certain individuals, that the reason we find it so abhorrent and so wrong compared to other institutions in society, where of course it still is wrong, but we don't quite see it in the same way, is because it goes totally against what the church is supposed to be about. The church gathering on a Sunday morning is supposed to be centred on the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead and so therefore our world is a completely different place as a result. Anything that is less than that, anything that uses that to abuse people, to abuse um, the power that the church has by proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus, falls short of what God has in mind for his bride. At this time, perhaps many have chosen not to join the Sunday gathering because it's mostly been online in the last year or so because of the pandemic. It would be really interesting to know how this has affected people's faith, if it has or if it hasn't in some way. Over the years, I've witnessed so many times where people have actually taken a step away from church and if you fast forward a few years down the line, often their faith isn't the same anymore um, and they, they've lost some of that connection that they once had with those around them. And first of all, I want to say before we conclude this video that there is absolutely no judgment. There's no condemnation. The church is not here to condemn people. It's here to welcome people with open arms. But I do want to encourage you today, don't give up going to church. Don't give up meeting together with other believers that are struggling with maybe some of the similar things that you're struggling with that you can talk to and um, explain how you're feeling to, but also that they can explain how they're feeling to you and mutually together we can continue to move forward as the body of Jesus and also to remember the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead. When we remember that fact every single Sunday morning when we gather together, suddenly it begins to put our problems and the world's problems in perspective and it anchors our hope in a future hope when Jesus will return again and actually all of us will receive resurrection bodies and we will live for eternity with him in the world that, just as he planned it, going right back to the Garden of Eden. So to conclude today, don't give up going to church. It really is important. And when we uncover some of the reasons why we meet together, why we meet on a Sunday morning, it can kind of remind us, oh yeah, this is actually quite important to do. So again, no condemnation, but I would so encourage you to continue plugging in. Um, hopefully we're not going to be online at all for much longer. We're going to be fully back in person together and we can meet and chat and have a laugh and also remember who Jesus is and what he has done for us. So guys, thank you so much for watching our video today. If you've liked what you've seen, then please do subscribe, like this video, comment down below. We would love to hear from you. And if you have any more questions, then please do let us know. If there's any particular content that you'd be interested in us looking at doing, then also let us know in the comments down below.